Welcome to the Ruana Poncho tutorial. This is made with the wool twister, and this is the one we're doing today. Same pattern, uh, with just regular acrylic, and for a smaller person or a child. To make the Ruana Poncho, you are going to need a hook and your yarn. For this demonstration one, I'm making a small size for one of my kids. And I'm going to be using a 9mm hook. I normally use about a 5mm or a 6mm hook for this yarn. It's just regular uh, craft yarn or chunky or a size 4. I am going to be using a size 9 because you want it to be pretty loopy, pretty lacy, pretty soft. Uh, so use a bigger hook. 3 to 4 millimeters bigger than what you would normally use for that yarn. So let's get started. We are going to start by making a chainless foundation of double crochet. So double crochet chainless foundation, I think it's called, which basically means we're going to be doing our chain and our double crochet, our first row of double crochet at the same time. So it's a bit finicky, uh, it takes a bit of getting used to, but it's kind of, it's worth doing because your chain will always be the right size for your stitches. Sometimes, you know, when you make your chain, it's, it's too tight or too loose. So this way avoids that, especially because it's a garment, you kind of want to make sure your chain is appropriate. So it's worth trying this technique. If you end up trying it and it's making you frustrated, then never mind, just get an even bigger hook, one millimeter or two millimeters bigger than this one, and just do your chain. Um, and how long we're going to make our chain, is from under the bum on one side or underneath your bum so from here up and over your shoulder to the same spot on the front of your body so we're going this way Mareep, Mareep. so that's gonna be your average measurement it'll depend on how tall you are obviously for how many stitches you're gonna do so just keep going until that's the size for you so to start you're gonna do a slip knot and put that on your hook and then you're going to chain four one two three and four now wrap your yarn like you're gonna do a double crochet go into the first chain you made just under on one loop is fine grab your yarn and bring it back and pull it up you want to have it like a bit loose this is going to be your chain so you don't want your chain to be tight wrap your yarn and take off one so that really is our chain now you're going to pinch it so I pinch it I divide that stitch with my thumbnail and I keep two strands underneath my thumb and one strand in front and now I'm just going to finish my double crochet so wrap your yarn and take off two wrap your yarn and take off two so that was our chain and our first real real double crochet so wrap your yarn and go right into where you're pinching so slide those two loops onto your hook grab your yarn and bring it back and pull that strand up wrap your yarn and take off one that's your chain and give that one a pinch. You can see it even wants to separate. So just give it a pinch in there and finish your double crochet. So wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. Can you see how we're doing our chain and our double crochet at the same time? So wrap your yarn and go into where you're pinching, grab your yarn and bring it back, pull up that loop, wrap your yarn and take off one. So that's your chain, pinch it, two loops under your thumb, one loop in front, wrap your yarn and finish your double crochet. So wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. So do that again, push it into where you're pinching, two loops on your hook, grab your yarn and bring it back, and pull it up. Wrap your yarn and take off one, 
that's your chain, and then wrap your yarn and do your double crochet. So wrap your yarn, take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. So you can see we're getting somewhere. So back into where you're pinching, two loops on your hook, grab your yarn and bring it back, pull that loop up, that's going to be your chain, wrap your yarn and take off one. So that is your chain. Now pinch it, two loops under your thumb, one loop in front, and finish your double crochet. So wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. And just keep doing that. Put your hook into where you're pinching, two loops on your hook, grab your yarn and bring it back, pull that loop up, wrap your yarn and take off one, pinch it, wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. And then just keep going like this all the way along until it's long enough for your body. Up one side, down the other, just underneath your torso. If you uh, have to go and do something, the best, easiest way to go about it is to get a stitch marker and give that where, you're, where you pinch, you put your stitch marker in there so that when you come back you know where you're going to go into. It's, it's easier with a big hook because you can kind of see what you're doing and you can see that it's stretchy both on both sides, it's stretchy here and it's stretchy there. It's very equal so that's good. That's where we're pulling this loop up. But I just put a stitch marker there and then when I come back I'm like okay that's where I'm going to go. If you don't have a stitch marker or if you're just learning this technique it can be confusing as to where you're supposed to go into. So use a stitch marker. If you need to rewind the video and watch that again, go ahead. Take your time learning this technique. I'll also post a separate video um, just of doing this technique, um, the chainless foundation and double crochet. It does take some getting used to. In the beginning, it can feel like it's really like it's wasting your time. You're not getting anywhere. But if you keep in mind that you're not going to be working into your chain. So all that fiddly chain work, you are not going to be doing. So keep going about 100 stitches or until it goes from underneath your bum, up and over your shoulder to underneath your torso on the front. And I will see you at the end of this row. So this is doubled in size and I did 110 stitches. Seems like a lot, but I don't want it to, it'll stretch still a bit, but I thought that would be nice for my daughter and it'll fit her for a while. So I did 110. So now let's keep going. At the end of your foundation chain and double crochets, you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work. Now into this first stitch, you're going to skip it because your chain three counts as that first double crochet. So you're not working into this hole there. You're going to wrap your yarn and you're going to go into this second stitch. Like that. So your chain three counts as the first one and then you go into the second one to make your double crochets and make one double crochet. My yarn, one second. One double crochet into each stitch going all the way back along your work. So now it starts to pick up its speed a little bit. It's a lot easier because you're just going straight into the stitch. So when you're going into the stitch, you're just going to go into that spot and underneath both loops of the V. Just regular crochet. So double crochet all the way back and I'll meet you at the end. At the end of the row, you're going to go into that last stitch doing your double crochet. And you're going to go into the chain. Remember we did that chain. Well, at the end of every row, there's always a chain and our chain always counts as a double crochet. So you're just going to go into that stitch. Into the last chain there and make a double crochet. So that keeps your end nice and even. And now you're going to chain three. One, two, three. Turn your work. 
skip this first one. Our chain three counts is that, double crochet. So skip the first spot and go into the second stitch for a double crochet. Now work all the way back. You're going to be doing this uh, until you have finished half your yarn or it is the length of mid forearm to base of your neck. So what that looks like is this. My little baby doll back over here. From the base of your neck to about there on your arm. So if that's your elbow, hard to see on a doll, sorry, but not the wrist because crochet is still going to stretch. So above the wrist, on me, I do it more than halfway. I don't do it in half. I do it a little bit more than half. And then when it stretches, it's, it'll, it'll relax down to be almost your full sleeve. So I do to about here, two thirds down my forearm and all the way up to the bottom of my neck. And how you're going to measure that, <laughs> let me get going this way actually. So we started here, this is our, our chainless foundation. So this is going to be here, where we started, is on my forearm. And I'm going to be crocheting up until it reaches my neck. I finished two balls of this really lovely Kavita Mint. But I've changed my plans slightly, hazard of living in a yarnery. I am going to incorporate these other two colors into my poncho. So I think I'm going to go that order. So two balls of each basically and then, so it'll go from Kavita Mint to uh, Ice Blue to Soya on that side. So it'll be a bit stripey, up and down. Well, it'll be stripey this way, it'll look like this. So one arm and then the center and then the other arm. Or that way and that way. But I think I'm gonna go this way and this way. So kind of from green to cream. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So just to keep it fresh. So I just wanna show you changing yarns if you're going to change color for yours, because it's a bit different. And you have to find the center of your yarn again. Ah, look at that. How lucky. All right. So at the end of the row, we're going to finish our stitch, our double crochet into the chain with our new yarn. So we're going to put a loop of our new yarn on our hook. I'm also going to loop up our old yarn and pull both through. So I'm finishing with both and I'm going to pull up our old yarn and just keep it on that side. So now this is ready to go. I'm just going to pull that up a little bit more right now and then weave in this old yarn into the back loops, just working our way along just so I don't have to sew it in too much and it also gets away from the edge. So just into the back loops, about five or six of these stitches. And give it a tug because you don't want it tight, you don't want it cinching in. And then I'm just going to pull it back two stitches going the other direction. And that just means when I stitch here and I stitch here, I'm going to be pinning it and it's not going to wiggle out. You're of course welcome to join your yarn any which way that you want to. This tail I'm going to leave and I'm going to do my chain three. One, two, three. I'm pinching it down there so it stays in place. And then turn your work. And just go back the way we always have. Double crochet one into each stitch and we've changed our yarn. And we're working over our tail of our old color. So that'll be behaving. Like that. We've changed.
change colors. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one ball of this yarn, and then that's going to, I'm going to estimate that that is the center, or where the center is going to be of this poncho. So let me finish this ball, and then we will do the neck area. So I'm just about finished my first ball of this ice blue. I have that much left. So I've come back along and I'm about halfway. So along the row. So this is my third ball that's finished and it's just about the right size for my daughter. So you're going to keep going until you're half done your yarn or it is the width from your arm up until Oh, your neck. So you will need more balls of yarn than me, unless you're doing it for a child like I am. When you are half done, or it's the right size for your body, from your forearm to the bottom of your neck, fold it in half, and you can just poke along to line up all your stitches, or you can count them or you can just guess, <laughs> to be honest. I'm just gonna poke along with these spaces, lining them up so I know where the center is. Because I don't really care about the number, I care about it being in the middle. And that's just faster for me. But you do however you're comfortable. You wanna find the middle of your poncho. So, ding, 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 ah, look at that, exactly. That was actually just total luck. So this is halfway, I've come back along halfway. So now, I'm gonna chain three and we're gonna go back along this side. One, two, and three. Chain three, turn your work. Make sure your hook stays in there. Now this is the beginning of your neck. So now go all the way back along, same as you were doing before, so kind of skipping the first stitch because your chain three counts, and go into the next one, double crochet all the way back down to the end of this row. At the end of the row, go into your last stitch and also go into that chain. So that is finished of your first half row going back. So you've done two. Now we continue working our way back. So I'm doing my chain three, turning my work, and going back. So skipping the first stitch into the second, double crochet, one into each stitch, going all the way back. So into the last double crochet, as usual, and into that chain. So I just kind of flip it up and push my hook in there. Two strands on the hook, and make my double crochet. So that finishes the neck area, and you can see that the neck area is now three double crochets wide. So it's pretty tall, and it's going to stretch, so we're finished with that. Now, let me just put in my stitch marker for a minute and put this hook farther away and this hook over so I don't get confused. Now we are going to be using our bigger hook because we cannot do chainless foundation that I have figured out anyway. So now what we need to do, now we have to count how many chains we need to do. So I'm going to count every stitch going back. So yes, it's counting time. 55. So I'm going to need to make a chain of 55 with my bigger hook. I have my 10 millimeter hook and I'm going to chain a really loose 55 stitches. You're going to do whatever stitch count you need to do the same number of stitches that you left out here, right? Mine's 55, you're gonna have a different number, but do them really loose, like extra loose. So there is my 55. I did them super loose 
because I don't want I don't want the center of my poncho to be pulling. And you can see, well you can't totally, but let me move it. That it is still shorter, like just laying naturally, it's still shorter than these stitches here. But when we work into it, I can still stretch it bigger. I can stretch it longer. Let me move it. I can stretch it longer. So it's, I think it's still going to be fine. But if you want to use a hook two sizes bigger, go ahead. It's better to be bigger than tighter because this is going to be right by your neck. It's kind of important. So. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to change my hook, so put that hook far away from me now. Get your regular hook back, and I'm going to just put a stitch marker in this first, or this last chain I did, because I just want to know that that's my chain. And then I'm going to chain three to get my height, one, two, and three, and turn my work. Like that. So this is my first chain and this counts as my first double crochet into that chain. So now I'm going to double crochet into each stitch going back. You can go into the back ridge if you want to. Um, I'm not because it's a pretty loose pattern. Uh, so I'm just going to go into each of these bumps. Well not bumps, what are they? stitches I suppose, chains. One double crochet into each chain going all the way back and make sure you've switched back to your other hook. My nine, I'm using my nine millimeter but go back to your regular hook. When you get to the end of the chain just keep putting one stitch into each chain until you're at the stitches and then jump right into the stitches. That's all you have to do. It'll look weird for a little bit, so don't stop, don't stare at it. Keep a move on. At least do three stitches before you go back to criticize your work. Because it'll always look weird until it's really pinned down. So really pin it down. And then you can go back and see. Oh yeah, look, it's joined. And you can make sure that you've gone into each stitch, which you did. And if you really want to be sure, you can count your 55 or whatever your number is. 55. Perfect. So, now keep going like usual. Nothing new now until we're going to change colors. So I've done the same number of rows of my center color. Although if you're doing it like my gray one or just a one solid color, just ignore this part. But if you're changing colors, just make sure you have the same number of rows on each side of your neck area, which I have done. So I am ready to change yarns. So I finished my last double crochet. I'm just going to put my hook back down into that stitch and grab a loop of my new yarn, my soya color, and bring that up. And I'm just going to poke that old yarn through and make a bigger loop. And now I'm just going to weave this blue tail in along the back loops of these stitches. Just so it's easier when I'm, when I'm sewing it in later. This is optional of course. But it helps a little bit. There we go. Stretch it out. Bring it back two stitches. There we are and we're ready to go. So with my new color joined, chain one, I'll drop that tail, chain two more, one and two. So there's my three chains. Turn your work, which is getting big now. And now we go back all the way along the top. So we're still skipping that first stitch and going into the second and one inch each. Same stitch we did for the whole poncho. If you're changing colors, count your rows. I think I have 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I have 13 rows of Kavita Mint, so I will do 13 rows of cream on this side. 
just so it's balanced out and it's even. And then that will be my my colorway. If you're doing it all with one color, then you're just going to count straight from the center. You're going to count all these rows on this side. So there's 13 rows here plus however many are here. I think there's seven. I think that's 20 rows all together. Yeah. So this is, I've done 20 rows all together, so I will do 20 rows all together on the other side of the neck. And we don't count these three that are the neck area. All right, so now keep going, almost done, yay! See you when we're finishing. So I finished my two balls of soya, and you can just check that it is the same rows that you did on the other side, because you want it obviously to be the same. So you can count and you can lay it on top to make sure that you have the same amount of rows. So this is a total of 20 rows and this is a total of 20 rows. So we're good. That was all we have to do. Now you're done your poncho. So last stitch, we'll just fasten off. So cut your yarn, leaving about an 8 to 10 inch tail enough to sew in with a needle later. And then you're just going to chain one and pull your yarn through the chain one. So that makes your little knot. Now you get your needle and you're just going to sew in all of your ends and you have finished making your poncho. Your Ruana poncho is ready for wearing. So sew in your ends and thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'd love to see your poncho and the yarn you chose and how it turned out. I will leave the link in the description box below, but do join our Facebook group and that's the easiest place to uh, share pictures. So I'd love to see how yours is working out. Oh, what did I just do? There we go. So please do that. Uh, like, subscribe, and share. And thanks so much for watching. Stay hooked.